Okay, hello and welcome to episode one of the Rusty Quill Gaming Podcast, an actual play podcast for extended tabletop campaigns coming to you from London, England. I'm your host and Game Master, uh, Alex Newell, and with me today we have... Uh, James Ross, Bryn Monroe, Ben Meredith, Lydia Nicholas. And this is our first official proper episode. It's only taken us 19 hours. <laughs> <laughs> Look, technology's hard, like really difficult. Um, so, um, for all the new listeners out there, because you can't not be, because it's the first episode, um, we're just going to basically play through a long campaign um, and record all, everything that's happening. Um, just to run through some things, what a tabletop RPG is for a start, because um, there's going to be some people who've never heard this before. It's collective storytelling, really. A group of people, um, it came from war games actually originally, um, where people would really, really, really like one of their individual characters and would want to give that character a bit more thing rather than like Troop 649227. And it kind of grew from that. Um, and how it works is that we pretend to be a character. And as we sort of do things, we're rolling dice, or if we're fighting, we're rolling dice, just to determine the outcome so that it um, can be a bit of a fairer, things like that. So what will tend to happen is if you are, say, opening a door, you'll be rolling a dice, and there will be modifiers, which are worked out ahead of time in character creation, which just reflect how good you are at, at doing a thing. So if you are very good at opening locks, and there is a lock, you'll get, say, a plus six so you'll roll a dice just like anyone else would but you will get a plus six because you are really good at that thing so the way that these things will work out is they'll sort of be half seen sort of people improving riffing off pretending to be their characters talking to one another and then half um sort of fighting and things like that and the other thing that can sometimes throw people is as the games master uh, i'm the one who's running it think of me as the playstation I'm I'm the guy who's who's churning out the NPCs and giving you quests and I'm ch- chucking things out basically. Does that mean you suffer from planned obsolescence so we can upgrade you in three to four years? Yes. Yay! Yes, it does. Good. <sighs> but um, yeah, so if, effectively, if you're going to think of it in those terms, I'm I'm the one who's sort of generating the story world. But at no point do I control any of the characters, apart from if something specifically bad happens. You know, you get hit by something. I tell I tell the players you have been hit by an arrow rather than you know you deciding to have been hit. You could if you want, but it's fairly suicidal. Um, the system we're using is the Pathfinder D20 system. It's an open source gaming system available totally legally at d20pfsrd.com. Uh, we'll put that in the link dump at the end so that you guys can basically click on that and go through. It's really amazing. They're doing good work. They took the sort of three point five gaming system for Dungeons and & Dragons, and then they simplified it, they streamlined it. It's, it's, it's big, but it's open source, it's free to use, and I strongly recommend that you go on there and buy some of their more obscure books um, so that they can basically keep churning out the stuff that they do, because they're doing good work. Um, and we're using it because, A, it's the system I'm most familiar with. Uh, I started on 3.5 and then moved on to Pathfinder. Um, it's got a really broad scope, which is great because it allows us to do more things with the story and it's free for all of you at home to actually follow along with because you can just access it and see what we're doing and it'll all be there. Uh, the story world's original. Dish. <laughs> no, uh, I, I wrote the story world um, and it's not meant to tie into the Pathfinder canon in any way. So before anyone says that continent's not there, I, I know it's it's not in the Pathfinder world. A, a lot of it's going to be in London, which mm-hmm. is a you know a real place. So... Also, yes, I know my geography of London is wrong. Just, just roll with it. It's fictional. So basically, assume that Alex is wrong. There you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, let's go with that. We'll, uh... Wrong is another word for fiction. <laughs> <laughs> Very literal, guys. <laughs> um, but honestly, um, I'll always try to sort of put viewers in mind as to what the monsters were. But we'll be reskinning things a lot. So you know, we'll be making things um, look a bit more story world appropriate. Um, and if you want to keep up to date with how we're playing the game and the mechanics, do check out our Metacast. We've already recorded episode zero. There's going to be a bunch more, sort of talking about more how the, how the maths of it works, leveling up, um, character creation, how you should go about building a backstory, things like that. And um, they won't they won't affect the story. So if you're just here to get you know get your fix, you, you don't need to go into that stuff. But there's always someone who's who's interested in that kind of thing, and, and you should check out those if you want to know more. Um, our house rules as well are available at rustyquill.com. 
Um, that's where all these podcasts are going to be available as well. So if you're thinking that I'm behaving a bit weirdly, it's all in there. I think rule one is that I'm right and you are wrong. Uh, I, can't, I can't remember. You'll have to double check. Cool. Yeah. Okay, so without further ado, we'll get this started. Everybody ready? Yes. You ready, Bryn? I was born ready. Oh, good, good. Right. We start in the skies above London. Um, it's not particularly uh, smoggy or anything like that. Um, there are huge shining brass roofs sort of spread out, and the, the city looks physically raised. You see that the Thames runs into it at one end, pretty much disappears is underneath the profusion of buildings, and then comes out the other side of London. Um, but while it's there, it's pretty much obscured. Um, there's all these enormous buildings, uh, bridges, bridge work. It's very shiny. It's almost suspiciously sort of clean and tidy it all it all looks very very nice um heading in a bit closer you do start to see you know there's some steams coming up from like manhole covers and the cracks and things like that but there's there's not the smog that you'd expect for a big big city uh, there's an overground monorail which is running in from sort of the southeast which seems to be running straight into the city um, as you're looking a, a train's running by it's it's a big deal it's huge it's very very opulent uh, it's moving at a fair lick maybe with a couple of sparks of lightning coming out the back as it goes. Uh, zooming in a bit closer, you start seeing the streets are, are filled with people. Interestingly, everyone seems to be, you know, quite quite well to do. Um, I'm not saying incredibly posh or wealthy or anything like that, but there doesn't seem to be much of a litter problem. There doesn't seem to be many people sort of wandering around begging or anything like that. Um, it seems very, you know, very, like I said, well to do. Uh, heading in a bit closer, you start seeing maybe off to one side, um, near one of the manor houses that are off towards the edge. Um, a, a, quite a large crowd are gathering at, uh, at some gates. Um, it's, it's, it's a townhouse, so it's tall, it's, it's narrow, kind of terracy, but it's not, it's not small. Um, and the, the crowd, are, they seem good-natured, they seem excited. Heading off to the side for a bit, further down the street, uh, we end up encountering a small girl. Well, I say small girl. I mean young yeah. woman. Yeah. And she's... How, how big is she? Small she's 5'4". She's not even particularly short. We encounter a woman. <laughs> Just a woman. Yeah. Uh, can you give us a brief description of what Sasha looks like? Uh, Sasha wears dark, fitted, comfortable and practical clothes. Description sort of slides off her. Mm -hmm. She sticks to the shadows, but not in any way that you would think of as suspicious. She's mm -hmm. just... Not an obtrusive kind of person. She moves oddly quietly. Mm -hmm. You might notice if you were walking by that she appears from nowhere because she walks without making that much of a sound, without drawing much attention to herself. Uh, she's very aware of you, though. Mm -hmm. So, um, like I said, there's a, a larger crowd which is a few streets away, um, but here it's here it's a bit quieter. And um, there's a couple of people sort of walking up and down the street. Um, could you give me a perception roll, Lydia? So for anyone listening, that would be rolling a d20. Uh, and what we're doing is we're basically seeing how good she is at noticing things. Seven. So that's a seven, but she also gets a modifier because she's quite good at looking at things, which will be on the sheet. Yep, my perception is plus six. Giving a total of 13? Yep. Okay, so Sasha notices that she thinks she's being followed. They, uh, they're doing a decent job, don't get me wrong, they're not like super ninja stealthy or anything, mm -hmm. but one guy has been, you know, he's been looking at a, a clockwork stand um, behind a, a shop for a little bit too long, and his angle, you suddenly realise that he's got a very clear line of sight for you with the reflection, and he, he certainly ain't looking at any clocks. He's, he's fairly tall, um, he's quite plainly dressed, mm -hmm. I wouldn't go so far as to say shabby, but it feels like he could be going that way if he left it a bit longer, you know? Uh-huh. And you say there's a crowd ahead of me. Um, there is a crowd further off to the left-hand side. Um, so you're in the middle of the street, let's say to your left, um, a few streets away. You're looking at a good sort of five-minute walk. You can hear it and you can see people heading in that direction. You can't physically see a big crowd. Okay. Um, the street you're on is lined with shop fronts. They're, they're middling. Um, they're not incredibly opulent, but neither are they um, pawnbrokers or anything like that. And he's further off to the um, right-hand side, further away from the crowds. And there's a few people who are walking past him. No one seems to be thinking that he's acting peculiarly. Right, OK. Well, I uh, cross the road mm -hmm. uh, and begin walking 
towards the the crowd, looking into shops as I go. Uh, I am not particularly walking fast. Mm -hmm. I make sure not to look behind me, but I'm catching, uh, I'm looking into as many reflections as possible to see whether this guy is actually following me specifically. And how, okay. so how far behind he is. So, um, you see that he moves away when you do. Give me another perception roll. Eight plus six, fourteen. Fourteen, um, pretty much same as before. You, you're pretty certain that he's following you. Mm -hmm. You can't discern any motives or anything like that, really. But you know, it's a thing where you're looking in one window just briefly to get a, re a reflection, and he's you know coming up behind you. You deliberately cross the road, you know, stopping for a moment for a uh, carriage to go past in the direction of the crowd, and then carrying on. Uh, and the guy's deliberately occupied himself looking at another shop just okay. to maintain that distance. He doesn't seem to be trying to close in on you, uh -huh. but he's definitely keeping pace. How close am I to the crowd? Um, a, a good, like, still sort of four, four minutes away. You're going to have to take a couple of turns left and right. It's, you know it's there because mm -hmm. there's, a, there's a big, you know, there's, a, there's the, that kind of furore, you know, that, that, that noise of lots of people. They're not right. yelling, but they're definitely there, and you can home in from the sound, if nothing okay. else. Uh, yeah, so I continue walking that way. Uh, if I pass, I'm looking into shops again, checking for the guy behind me. I am, um, unbeknownst to him, perhaps under my jacket, mm -hmm. uh, taking out bits of my disguise kit. Oh, yeah. Uh, intending to at least change my appearance very slightly. I've got a small foldable hat. Mm -hmm. uh, and I can uh, maybe. Gosh, do I have a wig? Probably have a wig. Uh, a, a, wig. a basic disguise kit would have. Think of it as the the real basic disguise kit. Have you ever seen the Sherlock Holmes movies, right. like the the big posh Hollywood ones? How he can sort of like bodge together a few elves okay, and ends. So, so you could I, have a rubbishy yeah, wig. Yeah, I've I've got I've got um, a small hat, and I'll have the stuff in there that would if I were to screw up my face and draw it across mm -hmm. my look managed to age me very slightly and <coughs> I am prepared I'm taking things up like out under my jacket ready to plunge into this uh, crowd okay. and come out the other side looking at least very slightly different. Okay, as you are sort of heading in, you're homing in towards the crowd, the guy's keeping his distance but he's, he's defi you're definitely sure he's mm -hmm. tailing you and um, you notice someone else steps into the street and then after a few moments, it becomes clear that he's also tailing you. Um, uh, this guy is much smaller, much leaner. Um, he's bordering on the shabby, um, but he's, he's clearly tracking you. And they're trying... Because you know what you're doing, it's quite clear that they are sort of hoping that you're aware of one of them, not both of them. Right. Um, you are moments away from the crowd at this point. Okay. Uh, I am, I think, still going to hope that this is the... Since I'm in a public space, mm -hmm. I don't think getting a weapon out would be appropriate yet. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I am going to fling myself into this interesting crowd. Uh, I assume... Am I there yet? Am I uh, yeah, 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 yeah. She's throwing, now, throwing remember, stuff into the I've crowd. Now, remember, I've got crowd dodger mm -hmm. uh, as a trait. Sure. So that means that I can move through it quite easily. Quite easily. Uh, it's quite easy for me to shift through things and manage to change. I, I change my hat. I age myself by like rubbing grey into what hair is showing out underneath and uh, into the wrinkles on my frowning forehead. I take my jacket off mm -hmm. and roll it into a bundle so that I begin uh -huh. to look a bit more uh, small, frail, and slightly different. I hold my space in the crowd for a little while. I don't know what the crowd is trying to do. I seem I'm trying to pick up on that while okay. fiddling with my appearance. So, um, let you know a bit about the crowd. Um, it's a big group of people, like a really large group of people, a couple of hundred. Um, they're all gathering the townhouse that I was mentioning earlier in the description. They're, they're gathered around that, that townhouse. It has some big wrought iron gates which are closed currently. Mm -hmm. um, it has a, a few city guards out front. Nothing dodgy, they're not like being mean, like cruel or anything, but they are keeping a, a significant distance because otherwise you're going to get people being pushed up against the gates. Uh, everyone seems good natured, no one's angry, no one's yelling, but it's very, it's very enthusiastic. It's like being outside a gig. Like, like people are 
uh, are rearing up for something. Yeah. Um, the townhouse is completely closed. It's completely white. Very, very tall. Uh, maybe, maybe four stories, five stories. Mm. Um, and despite being a sort of terraced townhouse, you get the impression that that terrace might be quietly expanding out into either side of the uh, other buildings. Like it's probably quite an expensive house. A um, couple of it has a sort of front yard with a couple of larger trees, and yeah, the, the crowd are all sort of craning to get a look, but there's nothing really to see. A couple of opportunistic people are selling stuff. Yep. Can you give me a roll for your disguise checks? That'd be another d20. Yeah, that's a twenty-sided dice. Oh, Ooh. one so, a natural one. <laughs> oh, one natural so, one. Um, for future reference, critical when... disguise fail. That right? is a critical disguise oh, fail. Oh God! So uh... <laughs> you're a moustache on yourself, and it's just a big arrow going. Here I am. <laughs> so yeah, for future reference, uh, twenty, or depending if you're doing combat, maybe a little lower. Like a twenty is called like a, a natural success, really. And mm. um, there are a few situations where I'll overrule it, but normally a natural twenty is a natural success. A one isn't just a fail. A one is that you've actively made the thing that you were trying to do harder <laughs> so basically you're going through the crowd you've, you're, you're doing all these things you're getting a lay of the land you're mm. also putting all of this stuff on you get the powder out to run through your hair trip bump into a small child and then the whole powder just yeah. flies up into the air it covers about five people all around you there's one gentleman who's <laughs> goodness me and like all these people around um, are just instantly drawn attention and it's clear that anyone from the edge of the crowd has just seen this big little signal go into the air with that we'll pan out and leave you in the middle of the crowd um so moving across from the city moving away from the crowd as it looks like a few people are getting disgruntled at this woman full (laughs) stop and we head across into a, a slightly a slightly lower rent district again it's not dingy but you get the impression it's where it's where a a, a merchant would live, not even a successful merchant. You know, there's, there's a bit more pubs, that kind of thing. Uh, and in fact, above what looks like some kind of uh, music venue or something, we go in and we head in through a very narrow window and then we enter this very, very small space. There is uh, a couple of chairs uh, upon which is sat Zolf. Can you describe your character for us, Ben? Um, am I out and about? Uh, you are currently sat on a chair in a fairly sort of, think of it as an above a pub, sort of dingy venue task. Okay, so I probably have left my armour at home. Yeah. Isn't it? It's that kind of situation, sure. Um, so, yeah. Uh, we'll say you have it in the room with you. Okay, fine. So it's probably hung up yeah, yeah. behind the door or something. I don't know, I don't know where someone keeps their armour. Um, <laughs> having never owned a set myself. In an armoire. Oh, hey. you're a bad person and I but really yeah, like that I'm joke. Helping, thank you. <laughs> so... Um, blonde dwarf uh, with sort of a bird's nest style hairdo. Mm-hmm. Um, it was likened to Boris Johnson, although that is thankfully where the comparison ends. Mm-hmm. And a um, large blonde beard, which has been braided into sort of two long um, beardo tails, <laughs> two braids under like where the jowls would be. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, uh, he's got a peg leg as well, a mm-hmm. metal one. Uh, his left leg, mm-hmm. to be exact, and he um, has a. Uh, sort of obvious amulet, which is a, a driftwood um, carving of a dolphin. Okay, cool. Well, like I said, there are two chairs, and the chair a little back and behind him is one bad-looking mother. Like, he's he sat there, big, big sort of desert coat, um, like a trench coat deal. Um, he's got he's clearly got a broadsword on him. Um, he isn't scarred but you, you kind of get the impression he's not scarred because he knows what he's doing, as opposed to because, you know, he just never got in a fight. Like, he's got the kind of lank haircut, that thousand-yard stare, and he's just there, and he clearly seems subordinate to Zolf. He's just there, just quiet, just sort of glowering. In front of both of them is a, a very, very weedy-looking 16-year-old, and he's sort of trying to do a handstand, uh, and he, he can't really manage it. He's looking fairly shabby. He sort of lands on his back and goes, <laughs> OK. Right, I, pro- I can normally do that, honestly. So, like, c- can I join? Like, c- can I can I be a can I be a merc? I, th- I think I've got like, like I can't afford the sword right now, but like like if you can if you can advance me, I could definitely like probably be, be a merc. I I gotta say, probably no. <laughs> Well, I mean, I mean, I mean, I, like I said, the hands. I could do the cartwheel. I mean, I could show you the cartwheel again. I mean. <sighs> It'd be... On reflection, handstand and cartwheels aren't really number one priorities for a mercenary. Uh, do you have any weapons? Um, 
uh, I'd say that my body is a weapon. <laughs> Are you very good with that weapon? <laughs> I was hoping I could learn. This isn't really a training course. I'm pretty sure they run them at the guild, but it, it's a no. Um, sorry. Uh, oh, yeah. Good luck. Oh, well. uh, go to school, like get trained and then come back in like, I don't know, five years. The kid kind of looks a bit crestfallen. Not surprised, but crestfallen. He kind of looks from you, looks to the thousand yard stair man, quickly looks back to you and then just sort of, sort of heads out, opens the door. And as he opens the door, there is just an enormous, gleaming, like, almost like a robotic monolith in the doorway. He opens it, and it's just a wall of steel. He sort of walks, stops, and it's just a wall of steel and falcons. Uh, and this kid just sort of, he doesn't seem to have registered what's behind the door. He just sort of looks at it, and then, sort of back to you. Hello? Hello? At which point, of course, we encounter... Hello! <laughs> James's character, Bertie. Could you uh, give us a bit of a physical description? Uh, my character is Sir Bertrand Bertie McGuffingham, and he is six foot five and pretty lardy, but in a sort of a healthy, muscular way mm -hmm. rather than just plain obesity. He's a very big chap. Um, he looks like a sort of a tall, fatter, blonder version of uh, Hugh Laurie playing... Uh, Bertie Worcester mm -hmm. um, in the 1990s uh, Fry and Laurie Jews and Worcester adaptation um, and he is wearing massive armour massive incredibly flashy armour um, and it is uh, adorned with huge falcons and it's incredibly fancily carved it is very much how um, you know a child would draw big fancy armour <laughs> if required to do so is it like when they draw a tank but it's got guns on the guns but it's, it's got, got guns, guns on the guns it's got falcons on the falcons <laughs> 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 okay, uh, yeah. and I'm going to jump away for that moment, just for that opening impression of your character. And we uh, we head back out through that narrow little window uh, and up into the sky. And then we cut to Bryn's character. Uh, he is in the casino. He is in a very, very opulent casino. An incredibly opulent casino. And he's sat at what looks like a roulette table. Upon it is a heaped pile of chips right in front of him it's clearly that clear that they are currently his chips um there are there's a decent crowd around him it seems like they've been drawn half by the money and half by him he's you know he's a very chipper looking guy uh, and the croupier is getting a little bit of a concerned frown like he might be doing his job badly and he's not sure why give us a bit more details about your character Brent. uh my character is a halfling um he is pretty good looking um he's got sort of uh sort of golden brown skin and sort of large dark brown eyes he's got an incredibly neat haircut mm -hmm. very clean shaven very well put together in an immaculate suit mm -hmm. um, he looks conflicted <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I could see why he would <laughs> Um, so the, uh, the, the table has a, a, like a, an elderly gentleman, very, very well to do. He seems to be wearing more fur than any other piece of clothing, despite the fact that it's perfectly, you know, it's a perfectly balmy temperature in there. Uh, he, he leans over and he's very impressive. Sure. Goodness me, I don't, I don't think I've ever, I've ever encountered someone quite as impressive. Um, I, I'm thinking all in on red gives you a really token wink. It's quite clear this guy maybe doesn't even understand how gambling works. Um, he proceeds to go all in with his sort of five chips on... Uh, what was it I said? Red. Was it on red? He puts his five chips on red uh, and then goes, oh, go on. All the crowd around uh, Hamid are like, oh, yeah, do it, do it, do it, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. The creepy just sort of gives a, uh, gives a sort of... a sort of glance, a knowing glance at you. If, if Sir's going to place a bet, I believe it's about time. Um, I play with my stack of chips briefly. Um, I flick a couple in the air mm -hmm. and pocket them, mm -hmm. and then push the rest mm -hmm. onto red. Okay, um, I'm going to take that opportunity now to uh, just take a brief break, uh, and we'll be back to you in a couple of minutes. Hi guys, Alex here. 
Normally we'd put an ad break at this point, letting you know about new developments at Rusty Quill, mention sponsors, or just recommend other shows that we think you'd enjoy. But today, we just want to take the time to thank you. It takes a lot of time and effort and money to make podcasts like this, and it means a lot to us that you've decided to listen, so thank you. You're awesome. In fact, you are so awesome that we want to keep making great content for you and introduce you to loads of new shows, but in order to do that, we need your help. The more listeners that we get, the more content we can make. It's as simple as that, and the best way that we can get listeners is by word of mouth. In the credits at the end of the episode, we include details about how you can get involved online, but honestly, the best way that you can help us is by recommending us to people that you know. Tell a friend, tell a co-worker, tell your pet iguana. If just one of the people or lizards that you talk to subscribes, that's going to be a huge help to us. We're looking forward to making loads more content for you in the future, and we want to share it with everyone that you care about. So thanks again for getting involved, and we hope we get to meet you, your friends, and all your lizards real soon. Well, that's everything for now, so sit back, relax, and let's get back to the show. And welcome back. So, I believe we just left uh, Hamid placing an enormous bet... Uh, instead of you know following that, what I'll do is I'll cut back to Sasha, and she's there having just made an enormous. I'm going to have to say proud of herself. Yes. Um, a lot of people are looking, and most people are laughing. Like no one, apart from the sort of posh gentleman who got covered in what he he thinks might be dandruff. Um, <laughs> I keep a pot of it about. I know. I don't. That isn't. That isn't in my gear. But it was in your backstory. I don't understand. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, cool. So, uh, what are you doing? The guys at the edge of the crowd are working their way towards you with a lot more sort of skill than you were managing with your disguise. Okay, um, I guess that I... I'm, can I... I haven't played this very much. Can I kind of examine area? I am looking for, like, places, crowded places where I might manage to slip past these guys. Uh-huh. Uh, dark corridors and that kind of thing. And that'll be a perception check. So again, rolling that d20 in. That's an 8 plus 6. 14. So 14. Um, it's quite hard to see, uh, given that you're in the middle of the crowd. You can see, obviously, the raw iron gates and that clear space in front. That would probably be a bad idea. Mm-hmm. There's back the way you came, but both of them are pretty much covering that. Um, so if you're in the crowd and the raw iron gates are to your right, to the left, there's sort of a, a main avenue. Um, which you can see the crowd extends down quite a decent distance mm-hmm. and it's it's clearly a, like a, a big deal and there's some guards you can see at the far distance are just starting to clear a path through for a carriage or something similar right. it looks like it'll take a while to get here maybe like another 10 minutes just because the crowd's quite okay. dense um, you could get out f- onto the far other side although there's a huge group of really drunken revellers mm-hmm. um, who are just kind of you know dancing around uh, they're not like catatonic and throwing stuff at one another Mm -hmm. but it's clear you know like oh why was he born so beautiful why was he born at all and they're all sort of having a bit of a party the people around them seem fairly good natured Mm -hmm. Um, and there's a couple of guards who are just kind of keeping a watchful eye beyond them are some uh, quieter streets there's still people coming up towards it uh, and after that you get into sort of more into the merchanty district right okay I am going to head up straight through the crowd Mm -hmm. using my I've got this lovely crowd dodger skill and I think my acrobatics and etc are all pretty high. I'm hoping that I'll be able to essentially slip faster than the people pursuing me through the dense pack of people. Uh, Maybe, you know, my plan will be to vaguely lose them or at least whatever and then slip down a side street. Okay. Um, Can you give me an acrobatics check just because of the nature of contortions that you're having to do? Because it's a packed crowd and you're still trying to work your way through. 20 plus my 7. Right? Natural so, yeah. 20. So, yeah, like, this just... Has a, a, this has been ups and downs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah, so with the natural 20, you um, are quickly managing to put um, put some distance between you. There's a lot of sort of reaching up to tap one guy on the shoulder as he turns around. You mm-hmm. go behind him and you have your back to him. As he's talking to the other person, you've already sort of... Um, greeted someone like they're an old friend they look at you confused and as you go into hug you somehow manage to make your way past them into the next group of people Uh, in no time at all you are at the drunken revelers and one of them reaches out and basically tries to pull you into a dance nothing lecherous or anything like that Mm -hmm. he is just like oh once there was a fiddler man a fiddler man was he and he starts pulling you into a jig excellent Uh, I I think I start 
dancing with the intention that I will gradually, I will use the the space to move quickly through the drunken crowd, swinging on <laughs> arms, being perhaps thrown into the air and caught a few meters down. I'm I'm trying to dash away in a dancey style. Um, so you move through that dance quite easily uh, and um, efficiently, and at the far side you you sort of make it towards the crowd. Um, at which point you see someone wearing an identical outfit to the first guy who was following you at the far end. Oh dear. And at that point, I'm going to lift away from you and jump all the way back across to uh, Zolf and James's character. Uh, the, the kid sort of stepped out of the way and allowed, held the door open for you to come in, kind of looking... Hi. Hello. Next. Hello! Yes, thank you, my lad. And I pat the uh, small boy on the shoulder. He visibly sags when you do so. <laughs> well done. Nice to meet you patting him on the shoulder over and over again. <laughs> He's kind of wincing a little bit and desperately trying to get out of the room and close the door. There, there. Off you go. Just tap on the other shoulder and just shove him out the door. Uh, 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 I, I, I am Sir Bertrand McGuffingham. Pleasure to meet you. Pleasure for you to meet me. Hello, hello. And he comes in and uh, shakes the hand of Zolf's character and the chap with the thousand eyes stare. Looks the chap with the thousand eyes stare right in the eye. Doesn't acknowledge that it's a thousand eyes stare <laughs> at all. Just shakes his hand very roughly. Hello, pleasure to meet you. Good. Yes. How are you doing? Are you well? Good. Excellent. Hello. Um, yes. Yeah, if you wouldn't mind taking a seat. Oh, thank you. Yes, pull back a seat and sit in the seat. So, um... <clears throat> Sir Bertrand. You may call me Sir Bertrand. My friends call me Sir Bertrand. Sir Bertrand it is then. So, what makes you... Why are you applying for this? Uh, Why am I applying for a job as a mercenary? For money and for glory, yes, to be... Have my name echo down the ages, yes, in the, the... Tales of bards and other people. Yes, it will bring throughout. Yeah, and money. Money. There's money, right? There is also money. I, money is definitely is, an element in this, this process. Is, yeah, no, no. This there's is definitely a, this some is, money. This is a paid. Yeah, yeah. Good. Yes. Right money. place then. Excellent. Okay. Uh, so, all right. Well, that's, I suppose, pretty covered. Um, and what makes you think that you would be a good member of the team? Right, well, uh, I can do this, at which point I stand up, I draw my bastard sword, I select a table, and I attack it with my, <laughs> uh, with my power attack. I'm going to give you a... Uh, <laughs> you know what, I'm going I'm to give you... I'm going to force you to do an attack roll just because it's Bertie. So you can roll me a d20. Four. What do I add to that? Uh, your attack bonus with the bastard sword, which is a four, I believe. Yeah. But you declared a power attack, so minus one from that. Mm-hmm. What's so it's basically? seven. Um, well, what we'll do is we'll say you draw the bastard sword, you wield it above your head, there's a big flurry, um, you then sort of double-hand it and just try to cleft it in twain. Misjudge the angle slightly and totally cleft one leg off. <laughs> like, that leg is cleft. The bastard sword is buried into the floor, like which is wood as well. It's not a, like a massive fail. It's still incredibly showy. But instead of the sort of wonderful parting as it, as it, mm. as it splits into a perfect divide, it more just kind of topples. <laughs> Imagine that table was an orc, yeah? It'd be like falling over. You know, because an orc with only one leg is bloody... Oh, oh. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes. Uh, not, not, not to worry. The guy with uh, the thousand yard stare uh, just leans in and uh, whispers into Zolfi. Um, <laughs> he'll probably do. If we're going to make it to crowd control, we should probably leave. Uh, I suppose you're right, figures. Uh, yeah, you're hired. Brilliant. Uh, you start immediately. Excellent. Lovely. Uh, we're doing a bit of crowd control at the moment, uh, trying to make sure people don't get too rowdy. Uh, it's a big event uh, going on uptown. Crowd, crowd, very well. Uh, what, what, what event? It's Lord Edison's mm, event. At which point we uh, will cut away to Hamed, and he's there at the table. The ball is there, dancing around, and the uh, old guy next to him goes, "We're definitely going to win. Definitely." I don't doubt it for a second. <laughs> croupier is, uh, is kind of dancing around, dancing around, and you can see the croupier. He's, he's, he's got a very calm composure to him, but his knuckles are a little bit white because you're currently betting more than his yearly salary. At which point, the ball comes down. And it is a black. And the croupier just kind of... Just 
kind of leans across and pulls the uh, pulls the stick and pulls all the chips. He's not he's not being a, a mean guy about it, but you can tell he's quite happy <laughs> because he's probably just gotten a bonus off that, and he's just stacking it again. He goes, "I'm very sorry that happened, sir. I'm sure that the." Uh, I'm sure that the the uh, casino bank would be able to offer you an, an extension, perhaps, or or maybe some more chips. I I look visibly shaken. I reach my hand in my pocket very slowly and bring out the three chips I squirrelled away earlier. Would Sir uh, care to place another bet? Only there are there are other patrons who are perhaps wanting to play. <sighs> I stare longingly at the chips and stare longingly at the roulette wheel. And I head to the exit mm-hmm. uh, and ask to turn my chips back into cold, hard cash. Yep. The uh, the guy behind the metal grill with with the chips takes the two, kind of looks at them a bit pityingly, and goes, "You know, oh, was it three? My mistake. Three, three chips. Thank you. I'll three have you chips. <laughs> hey, that's that's like a like a one hundred and fifty percent increase from two. <laughs> um, so the guy kind of holds the three. Chips looks at them a little bit pityingly and he goes, It's all right, you know. Starts, you know, converting them into cash. Uh, if it's any consolation, I thought you'd leave with nothing. So that's that's plus. That's four pluses. Four pluses for you. And he uh, hands over just four gold pieces. Thank you. Uh, I suppose things could always be worse. Oh, yes. I mean, you could leave right now, and actually, if you were to place one more bet, you could be you could win on one of the larger tables, eh? But you wouldn't know because you'd have left. No, no, it, it, it's time. It's time to to do something else. All right, all right, all right. Well, you have a lovely day, and uh, remember that uh, Charlemagne's is always open for those who like to have a little bit of a tickle on the cards. Thank you, <laughs> thank you. Uh, hopefully I won't be seeing you for quite some time why does everyone always say that when they're losing eh I don't know (coughs) right I uh, uh, I wonder what happens now I wander off down the streets you head down onto the uh, down the carpeted stairs open the doors from the softly lit walnut interior to um, a crowded street and bright sunlight that's Really too bright, like really, really too bright. Um, you've clearly been in there a little bit too long. Um, there is a large sort of natural flow of people. Uh, there's a big crowd sort of off to the right hand side, um, and yeah, the, the flow of the crowd is certainly heading in that direction to the point where you'd kind of be salmon up street. street I, the other I follow the crowd. Mm-hmm. I'm going to see what everyone's so excited about. Okay, so. We jump back to Sasha um, as the, the three followers are closing in. Okay, so I didn't lose the other guys. Uh, you didn't manage to lose them. You, you got you got a big distance on them, uh-huh. so you've, you've still got time to work with. But they're still sort of trying to work their way through. But they're kind of they're kind of trapped in the crowd, but they totally have a bead on you. Okay, well, uh, so you're saying that where I am right now, I've got to the edge of the drunken revelers, mm-hmm. and then there's some side streets into the merchant district, if I remember rightly. Uh, yeah. I think I leg it down one of those. Okay, cool. So yeah, you um, basically the second that the the revelers part just for a second, you dart out and into a side street. Um, I, I wouldn't need a roll for that. Like you've been doing well enough with your dancing. And you head straight down to a side street, you know, quick, um, disappearing off. And the second that you head into a side street, you run slam into what you feel like is just a wall of metal. Mm. A very kind of embellished and gilded metal, <laughs> but metal nonetheless. Ah. Hello! Do I draw a perception check to, <laughs> <laughs> to notice if someone's <laughs> running into me? <laughs> I'd say that the clang is loud enough, but you didn't feel the actual impact. Oh, they're out. Okay, fair enough. Uh, oh, and I kind of look around. Uh, yeah. To elaborate, obviously uh, Bertie's mm-hmm. there, as is uh, a little bit off to the side, Zolf, and then behind him, the tall, muscular, good-looking, slightly debonair, but also threatening thousand-yard stare man. Uh, whose I... name is now Figgis. Whose name is now Figgis. Whose name is now Figgis, right. Because you got his name in before I did. I did, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for that <laughs> Oh, hello, young lady. Terribly sorry, didn't see you there. Uh, I think that I try and run past. I don't think I can think of a convincing character reason to stay. 
Okay, that's fine. Uh, give me a... It, it depends how you want to go past. Uh, acrobatics would probably be the natural one. Yeah. I'll try and, I think, slip through his embellished legs and run off behind because he mm-hmm. presents such a large wall of... Oh, a 19. 19, okay. I believe technically you're meant to roll an opposed check, but frankly you won't make it with an armor check. Yep. So, um, basically you take a moment, you turn around and see one of the guys has basically come into the mouth of the alley. Oh, you know what, I think I'm going to flip through the legs and hide behind Bertie. Oh, okay. He's massive. Oh yeah, he's huge. So maybe they won't notice me. Mm-hmm. I don't know, that sounds quite naive. Try and, try and roll think, for hiding behind me. I think I, no, I, I think I'd leg it down the. I'd leg it down the street. Yep. Okay. Sasha legs it down the street. Okay, so yeah, you duck between his legs, uh, dodge, uh, encounter the thousand yard stair guy who just, mm. um, and uh, Zolf as well. I'm just <laughs> At which point you start pegging it down the street, mm-hmm. and almost predictably, there's another guy at the end of the street who steps into the alleyway on either side of you. Uh, uh, sorry, at the other end of the alley. Uh, none of them are sort of brandishing anything. They have just sort of uh-huh. carefully just positioned themselves and seem to be standing just... May I do a perception check to notice the two people? Oh, yeah, sure, sure. Will yeah. I do it as well? Yeah, sure. Uh, Give what, me your lovely. total plus the modifiers. Cool. Oh, it's on... Um, yeah, cool. 13. Uh, I've rolled a four. I've got a perception of minus one. <laughs> I barely noticed that there are alleyways. <laughs> so am I. Oh, which way is up in this gravity? <laughs> so the thousand yard stair guy, he, he kind of looks to the left, looks to the right, nods to you. You, oh yeah, you, you kind of twig it. Um, you, however, are just quietly going, there was a person here. <laughs> <laughs> there was definitely a person here. What are bricks? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's not—it's not like complete utter yeah, fail, but it is a case of you're still processing the fact that there was a Sasha and now there's not a Sasha. I've seen women before. <laughs> <laughs> that. Yeah. Uh, I am backing slowly into having dashed past them and mm-hmm. backing slowly away. Mm-hmm. Can I just clarify briefly the situation in this alley? So it's a long alleyway. One end is blocked by one of these gentlemen. The other is blocked by the other similar-looking gentleman. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sasha has gone through the alley past us, us yeah. and is now closer to one I'm end of the alley. And, that stopped, and, and I'm and slow, stopped. and I'm backing, backing back, right back okay. to Oh, yeah, oh, we've, we've got, got models. Yeah, you do. Where's Figus's model? I think I'm oh. probably about there. Figus's model? No, that's way too big for Figus. Figus he, isn't a large he creature. He gets to be a Carnifex. Oh. What about that? Oh. That's sufficiently scary. We've only got Tyranids. Or you could be him. Oh. That makes more oh, sense, because yeah. then you have these as should, the enemies. Should we have a, a behind-the-curtain yeah. behind behind kind of moment where we're playing with chess pieces and... Oh, yeah, to, to spell out, this sounds <laughs> like, oh, they've got all these awesome things. What we did is we found some old uh, miniatures. I Genuinely, I haven't used these for, like, 17 years. Um, I've dug them out of some boxes. Um, so this, this, is, is, this is the alley. So I've, I've come... Running in, I've slid through his tin man legs uh-huh. and sort of done a roly poly and begun running and then stopped dead and seeing this guy. Back this and now I'm backing this way. Okay. Before um, you guys have even turned around, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely facing that, that way, I think. <laughs> oh, actually, figures kind of notice. Uh, like technically, yeah. according to the rule system, there is no such thing as the way you're facing. Okay, fair enough. You're considered yeah. to be facing in all directions simultaneously. How <laughs> <laughs> do I flank anyone, then? <laughs> because you specifically have to be have a partner. Ah. It's it's a weird one where... like Brin's It right, actually it works quite well. It, yeah. From it's, a rules perspective. The idea behind it is that you are aware 360, what with hearing and everything else, but what you're not aware of is like... Well, it's when you have to divide attention. Mm-hmm. That's the idea behind flanking, is it's when you're splitting your attention. So if someone's directly behind you, unless you're like catching the yeah. initiative on them, then they're technically yeah. aware of you. Okay. Um, so if we all just take a moment, uh, I suspect that a little bit of combat might be uh, on its way, but not yet. Oh. As the two start approaching. Do, do we have a problem here, gents? No problem. No problem. No, I, I, I don't see a problem. Oi. Oi, Thompson. Thompson. Do we have a problem? No. No problems. Excellent. If there are no problems, lovely to meet you. Hello. I'm Sir Bertrand Bertie McGuffingham. <laughs> I hold up my hand for a handshake. Oh, hel- hello. Uh, I'll shake your hand, but I've just eaten food. Um, <laughs> while this 
wonderful distraction is happening, <laughs> I will sidle up to Lid's character, mm-hmm. to Sasha, and be like, what's going on? Right. At this point, I think it is useful for me to ask uh-huh. if I recognise either of these. I, I've got an idea of who they might be from complicated backstory, mm-hmm. but whether I... Uh, do I... And I, I also know that not recognising them doesn't mean that they're not part of that group. Uh-huh. But do I do I recognise them at all? You recognise one of them. Uh-huh. You recognise the one who was known as Thompson. Uh-huh. Is that that uh, one or that one? Mm-hmm. Thompson is this one. Or is it Thompson and Thompson? Oh. You don't know it's the other guy's name. It's a tin joke. Yeah. You basically, you know, you, you, you recognise Thompson. Mm-hmm. You also recognise that's not his name. Yeah. Um, and what you know about him? Yeah. He's not the biggest, scariest person in the world. Uh-huh. But he's kind of big and scary enough. Yeah, and he's got three other people behind him in the crowd coming towards me, right? Yeah, probably. Yeah, well, I mean, there were two that I slipped and that are coming, I know, further back. Yeah, that's kind of what I mean, is yeah. that, like, uh, it's it's a safe bet. Yes, so uh, I answer your... Th- yes, yes, we do have a problem. Right? Yeah. What's the problem? Uh, well, these... I used to work for this uh, these these guys, uh, and uh, I don't want to be engaged in, uh, in in their line of business anymore. And they uh, they uh, they disagreed with my employment change in employment status. All right, uh, that, that now was... come on, Sasha. We've uh, we've all got places to be. Oh, you know. Yeah. Oh, oh that oh, that thought. Um... Alex, just checking. Mm -hmm. Uh, This is the crowd we're supposed to be dispersing, right? Just just round the corner. Uh, The crowd is quite literally like just round the corner. There is a big flow of people just at at the um, opposite end, at this end of the alley, and the one closest towards Thompson. There is a big flow of people heading straight in towards that crowd, um, and you are currently right next to that crowd. Yeah. Okay. Is it our legitimate business purpose to keep this free-flowing traffic moving along this alley? Oh, totally. Okay. Uh, as, as far as, as he's as, briefed you. Right. Yeah, about Oh, uh, would you leave this to me? Sorry, gents. Uh, we've been hired to keep uh, to keep the crowd control. We've got, uh, you're, you're obstructing the flow of traffic. Uh, Figgis, Bertie, if you wouldn't mind moving these gentlemen out of the way to uh, stop restricting a public byway, stay by me. I don't really and think this is... Uh, no, behind, sure, so. sure. I don't really think this is necessary. I mean, we, we, we're just have, trying to have a conversation. That's Sorry, all. sir, we are just doing our jobs. Oh, so are we, so are we. <laughs> I'm sure you understand. They just approach even closer. Well, well, now perhaps we could have this conversation outside of this narrow alleyway. Keep traffic moving freely, moving slightly closer towards Thompson, just kind of usher him out of the alley. And then I headbutt him in the face. <laughs> <laughs> I might go ahead and say that we might be entering combat right now. Mm. So, Is that uh, for initiative? Well, <laughs> with that in mind, can everyone roll for initiative? What, do I, what am I rolling? So roll a d20. Amazing. Add your initiative modifier. And add your Nine initiative modifier, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go round the table and get you guys to tell me what they are. So, Bertie, what was your initiative? Uh, I have nine plus one, which is ten. Ten. Uh, I'm not currently in the scene. Fair point. <laughs> Two. <laughs> is that with modifiers? Two. <laughs> yeah. Uh, mine is thirteen with modifiers. Okay. Let me just roll for Figgis, as his name is. The Thousand Yard Stare Veteran Figgis. <laughs> <coughs> okay. And despite the fact that you're not in the scene, Bryn, can you do a, do me a solid and roll initiative anyway? Eight. Eight. I, I really hope you come flying from the sky like a meteor <laughs> yeah. or something. Just gets thrown in. Yeah. <laughs> okay, and with that in mind, uh, we'll just take a moment and then we'll set this board up. Okay, cool. So we've uh, set the board up. It's an alleyway. There is a crate towards one end, um, and there is a sort of nook doorway halfway along. We've got Thompson at the end um, next to Bertie, who's literally moving in to headbutt him in the face. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've got Figgis in the middle, the thousand yard stare Figgis. Uh, <laughs> Which direction name. is he staring in? I think he's staring in all of them at once because <laughs> yeah. it's Pathfinder and that's yes. how the game works. <laughs> <laughs> um, then we've got uh, Sasha behind um, Zolf 
And then at the other end, the, the, the man with no name, mm. currently. It's mysterious. Um, who no doubt Ben will name, like, Clumpty Stump or something. Good in, name. In the we'll, we'll take it. <laughs> and now it's going to stick as much as I did that as a joke. It's totally going to stick Clumpety as a name. Clumpty Stump the thug. <laughs> <sighs> Right, okay, so anyway, yes, first things first, since you initiated, I'm going to give you a surprise round, Yay. because you've gone from, let's all be reasonable, yeah. <laughs> so, with that in mind, you're going to give me an attack roll, yeah. however, it will count as an unarmed attack, because you're trying yeah. to nut him in the head. Does That's it, fine. because he's got falcons on his helmet, you said... Does that count? I don't think the Falcons have a combat bonus. Uh, they could. It's up to you. I'm, I'm quite willing to give you a penalty for having <laughs> such a heavy helmet that you can't control if you want. Oh, I would have thought that the extra. Maybe it's like a power attack, but for your head. Like, it's harder mm. to hit him with it. You could power attack him with your head. You know? <laughs> oh, yeah. That is. Mm, mm, I think it's it's a crowd control headbutt. It's not one that's meant with that much in the way of vicious. I realise it's a headbutt, but it's not. <laughs> then go for it. It's not okay. a death headbutt. It's just, exactly, it's just a normal headbutt. I'm going to try and get the turns moving fairly okay, quickly. Sorry. Like, we can take time for discuss rules and stuff, obviously, but I'm going to try and keep so, it shifting. But do cool. make sure you describe what you're doing. Sure. Um, so um, I lean in to kind of, you know, move them along gently and then whack. Okay, go for um, it. So what am I rolling for Roll here? a d20. Yeah. That's a 20. Natural 20. <laughs> okay. Um, the maximum you can deal unarmed is 1d6. No. Roll to confirm the crit. Oh, yeah, good point. Thank you, Ben. Uh, so roll it again. Nine. Total attack, total melee attack bonus is four. But I'm it's going to give him the gauntlet bonus because he's wearing a helmet. Right. Because why not? Um, so roll 1d6 for damage. Three. Three. Okay. So let's just put that one down. It's quite a bad strength, head. strength bonus of three. Oh, yeah. So s- mm-hmm. I've done six damage. Plus the gauntlet thing? No, right? no. It's times because it's a, it's a crit. Oh, cranky. So how much damage have I done to him now? <laughs> uh, he's, I think he's a puppet. The nine... <laughs> The nine wouldn't confirm. Go, go through oh, it. Right, okay. Is he not flat-footed? Is it oh, yeah, it is as well. Thank goodness I've got all of you here. <laughs> so what's happened? So, yeah. Basically, you are going to be rolling uh, 2d6 plus strength, yes? For well, a confirmed Plus crit. strength twice. If it's... Oh, yeah, plus strength twice. There you go. Uh, so roll the d6 again. So you did six and another six. He's done 12 damage. <laughs> 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 okay. He's just, okay. So <laughs> I've headbutted and I've just I've whacked his skull straight down over his spine, which just pokes out through the top of it. So you, you have knocked him out. Yeah. He's oh, not, he's not fit. So but basically, what's happened is you, you, okay. you're, you're basically stood there going, "Come on, let's be reasonable. Let's be reasonable." You just grab his collar and bang. The falcon catches him right on the bridge of the nose. There's a brief flash flash of light in his eyes, but he'll never know if it was the falcon or the blow. But either way, he just crumples. Just gone instantly KO'd. He's out of it already. How how noisy was that? There was a clang. Okay, cool. Like, to the point where people walking this way stopped and have turned to look and are now watching at this oh. end. That end, there's still people going past there because there's sure. too much in the way, but here, totally, people have but noticed. If, if we'd have legitimately heard that clang as well, yeah? Oh, yeah. Oh, OK. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> this, this is echoing down. It sounds like someone got two dustbin lids and then it was just cymballing them. <laughs> <laughs> so Bertrand is definitely the sort of character that would be in stomp. <laughs> <laughs> OK, um, now we'll enter initiative, now that you're past the, um, the surprise... KOing one person in a single <laughs> blow round. Um, so it's Figgis to start. Figgis uh, turns around, sort of has a gander at the situation, assesses it, <laughs> and steps into the shadows. I told you that one. <laughs> 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 Sasha, you're up. Uh, I. Hmm. Oh, you're not engaged in fight. This is the problem with having high initiative, but only really being able to be good once people are already fighting someone if else. If his initiative hasn't come up yet, he yeah. will be flat-footed. Okay, so I think I essentially will be... I'll be running around him and coming in from the side. Okay, so what's your move speed? 
30. Okay, so with uh, this is just explained for uh -huh. listeners as well. So we're using the Pathfinder system, which uses the five foot squares. Uh -huh. So when you have 30 foot, that means that you can move 30 divided by five, which of course is Six. Six. Yeah. that. I phrased that as a question because I couldn't remember the math. Uncle. It's been <laughs> a long, long that's day. That's only five squares. So, so yeah, so you can totally do that move. Um, also, it's worth bearing in mind that mm -hmm. when you move along diagonals, mm -hmm. The first diagonal that you move is 5, mm -hmm. the next diagonal costs 10, then what? 5, then 10, then 5, then 10. There's the only one diagonal. Now I know, I'm just explaining it for future. Uh, the reason for that is it's to keep the movement balanced, because otherwise you could sort of skip the system by going, I charge in a semicircle and get there quicker. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like, the maths would go a bit wrong. Um, you technically move through his threatened area, so he potentially could nope. get a attack of opportunity. I ah. don't. I've got... Um, well, it just means that I've got... Plus two on acrobatics, moving through a creature's space, mm -hmm. including threatened space. So, but he won't get an attack of opportunity anyway because he's still flat-footed. You Excellent. can't get attacks of opportunity until you've had your first action. Correct. I believe. Cool. So, I uh, thought that that trait also meant that you didn't get an attack of opportunity for. Oh, it was leaving a threatened space. Yeah. Well, for Pathfinder, um, attacks of opportunity are either triggered by something that specifically says it. So, attacking someone. Um, with an unarmed attack, they would get an attack of opportunity, but he didn't because you basically came from nowhere with it. And um, you only ever get an attack of opportunity normally in combat when you're leaving a threatened square. Oh, okay. So characters will normally threaten every square that they're adjacent to, sort of in a, in a square around them. Uh, if they have something called a reach weapon, they can threaten like every two squares and beyond. So I have that. So yeah, so that means that you can basically hit him if he's like ten foot away, depending on what the reach of the of the uh, triangle is. Ten foot. Oh, okay. uh, no, he's got to move triangle. into. All right. So what would <laughs> for, for the attack of opportunity? <laughs> he'd have to be within ten probably... feet of you and then try to leave that ten foot or move within that ten foot yeah. sort of square you have yeah, around yeah, yeah. you. Yeah. He's, okay. He's four foot, so this. But I have to have is... a special weapon profi proficiency to use it, <laughs> okay. which I'm allowed to be because uh, uh, clerics automatically get are proficient in the weapon of their gods. For example, with Poseidon, obviously it's a trident, but you're not usually proficient with tridents. Because Priest of Poseidon, proficient in four sub or three sub nuclear deterrents. <laughs> I've chosen my god. <laughs> so, keeping, I, keeping the turns moving. I am, so I'm standing at the side of this guy, and uh, I am going to flick out my spring-loaded wrist cheese. Whishink, whishink. Yep. Dab him in the side. And because they're spring-loaded, you basically get them as a swift action, so you don't need to worry about that. And so, you are going to want to roll both attacks. Right. So um, I would recommend rolling a... It's a d4. It's a d4 plus sneak attack. Cool. Because he's flat-footed currently. Oh. And there's a hit. There's so a you need to roll a d20. Uh-huh. 17. Which is a hit. So roll those damage first. Do, so yep, uh, roll these? both. Uh, four and one. So that's five. Plus one. Uh, plus one for when flanking. Yeah, just add one. Oh, uh, not flanking. This isn't flanking. Yeah. It right, is okay. flat-footed, but it's not flanking. Um, yeah. So that's uh, five from the first attack. Roll the second. Mm -hmm. And add to here again. Oh, to, right, yep. Thirteen. So I guess... That, as far as I'm aware, will be a hit again. Because he's good, but he's not that good. And he's flat-footed. And, yeah, so to clarify, flat-footed means you're catching a character unawares. Right. So what that means is that your sneak attack is active as if you were flanking, but very important, you're not flanking. Right. Because there are some things it will say when flanking, blah. Okay. Uh, also, um, it affects things like their AC is lower and stuff like that. Cool. So basically, for you, you always want to be catching people flat-footed. How do I know if I've hit him? So 13... I basically tell you. Okay. Um, cool. You've hit him. Uh, six plus two, eight. Eight. Okay. Is it not? Your strength modifier is one, so it should be eight minus one. Oh, yeah, good point. Oh, so, okay, so seven. Was that true of the other one as well? Yeah. Oh, yes. So be. that what was that was five, or was it four? That was five, because it was a four and a one. So right, actually so did four. So that was four, and seven. this is seven. I'm going to be honest, it doesn't matter. Right. <laughs> He's down! Hey. Um, yeah, quite simply, he, uh, he just seems to be sort of reaching for something under his uh, jacket, mm -hmm. and, yeah... Just straight away, you come up behind him, and um, how describe what you do? Uh, so I 
bounce off the walls. <laughs> That's nice. like, yeah. So I'm I'm kind of in, running in a kind of arc. Mm-hmm. Uh, parkour. Yeah, it's, it's pretty. I'm a parkoury optimized character. <laughs> frankly. That's, that's really, crowds and acrobatics is what I do. So I come around the back. I, you guys barely see, I guess, because it's only as I get right up to it that I flick my yep. daggers. They're in my hands, and I stab. I stab him. Um, just under his arm as he's reaching for his weapon. Uh, so he collapses mm-hmm. very quietly. With a potentially collapsed lung. Yeah, he, he falls silently. There might be a slight okay. wheezing sound, I guess. Okay, yeah. Like and balloon deflating. And he balloon just... made of meat. Yeah. Oh. Uh, I, okay. I guess, am looking back and really considering heading off and running again, because I know there are two more people coming behind me. Uh-huh. But, um, yeah, so look. One sec. Actually, let me. Okay. At which point, shocker. Mm-hmm. I need my uh, little dudes. Mm. Two more. Uh, basically, come in. Mm-hmm. One of them comes in, assess the situation. Second one comes around him, assess the situation. Um, I'm going to make that their turn because they can't just run around and go, I know what's happening around this corner! Technically, Pathfinder kind of allows that. I think it's daft, so no. And that's setting a precedent for you guys as well. You can't just blindly charge in where you've no idea what's happening. Yeah, yeah makes sense. Um, okay, with that in mind, Bertie, you're up. You are currently stood over a faintly bloodied and very unconscious uh, man as two other people come, and there is a crowd. Isn't it his guy? No, 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 because oh, no, no, Bertie no. acted he, in a he, surprise. He, did right, okay. the, he basically did the surprise so of... So that was before... Hello! Yeah. Bang! I get it. Okay. We all learned something. Quick aside, are these people wearing the same uniforms? You mentioned uniforms. They're not uniforms. They're oh. basically wearing fairly nondescript clothes. Oh, right. Um, neither guys. posh nor poor. The poorest one was um, sort of... Thompson was slightly shabby, but he's kind of KO'd. <laughs> um, so these two others come along. They get the situation, and you're looking at them, and they're going... Given that we've killed they're, one of them and not They're one hesitating, seconds. but they seem to be willing to maybe give it a go because they're looking past you at um, Sasha at the far end, who they can just about see. Okay, at that point. Um, can I... Da, 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 would I suffer any sort of combat penalties if I attempted to intimidate them before I... Given that they're a few feet away, this chap is down, that chap is dead, and that's before they've even got into the alley. Well, why don't would, we look up the exa- exact... That? wording for intimidate okay. um, it has very specific sort of gameplay actions in um, combat so looking this up briefly to get the exact wording mm-hmm. basically you um, in combat you can use it to cause an opponent to become shaken okay um, and the DC would be uh, DC being how difficult it is what you'd have to roll to affect that mm-hmm. is 10 plus their hit dice so like how many dice are hit dice is a way of referring to basically their overall health Okay. Um, and the target's wisdom modifier. Mm-hmm. Would you make it a, a level one comparatively steep check? And if you're successful, they're shaken, which basically gives them a penalty on their go. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's pretty much the sum total of it. Um, and also that would pretty much be your yeah, turn instead of a, an attack. A shaken character takes a minus two on attack rolls, saving throws, skill checks and ability checks. Um, so yeah, what you would be doing is you could move if you want, but you'd be going ooga booga 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 booga. They'd have a bit of a penalty, and that'd be the sum total of. That's not very impressive. I was what I was shooting for there was something along the lines of that guy's been knocked out, that guy's been killed, and they've just arrived in the alley. As GM, I'm, I'm allowed to apply some. I'm allowed to apply some modifiers. Um, but yeah, you can do the roll, and you can see. I'm not going to tell you whether it succeeds or not. Okay. But mechanically, if you succeed, they would be worse at fighting you wouldn't necessarily be able to make them flee. That's kind of a yeah. GM's discretion. I'm not sure I'll bother. Um, in that case, the odds seem a bit steep for uh, limited reward, mm. so I might just do it as flavour. Good afternoon, bloody little poor people! And I draw my massive sword. Okay, drawing a sword mm-hmm. counts as a move action. Okay. Um, which is fine. Mm-hmm. Um, so then, uh, can I close the distance between them? Not really if you're only just drawing your bastard longsword. That's the problem oh, okay. with the bastard longsword. It's massive. It takes a long time to draw. You can, <laughs> you can move while drawing a sword. You Which is just... what I was leading into, yeah. yeah, is that what you could do is, if you are going to move and draw, you can. What you couldn't do is, 
I know it sounds really pedanty, but it does make a difference mechanically. Yeah. If you were to draw your weapon, you couldn't then move, but what you could do is sort of the move and draw. Oh yeah, oh, well, I'll do that then. That makes sense. Sure. Um, Where do you move to? Uh, is my movement impeded by the unconscious Thompson in front of me at all? Um, it would around. count as difficult to rain. Um, however, <laughs> step, step round to There's, there's okay. really no reason for you not to just step round. I'll step round. It again. makes no difference cool. mechanically. Fine. Um, yeah, I think. There, that's five. Mm -hmm. That's ten foot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then I'll attack this chap. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I'm not saying anything wrong so far. That's all fine. No, it's all good. I'll, I'll, I'll leap on you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Violently and unappreciatively when you do so. Now, this might sound stupid. I'm assuming that I've got my shield out at this point as well. Um, we'll work under the assumption that you're carrying your shield unless I or you say otherwise. Okay. I think it would make sense in a general crowd control scenario. You would have had, had it. my like, shield out and you, not my sword. You wanted to show off for your interview. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I'll often have my shield out at an interview. <laughs> Where do you see yourselves in five years? Time? Behind a shield! <laughs> <laughs> um, Give me the roll. Cool. Uh, okay. Uh, eight. Plus your attack bonus. Uh, four for the Bastard Saurus. Golly. Taking you two. Twelve. Which misses. Ooh. It's a... You give a big old swing and the guy just sees it coming, mainly because the sword's as big as he is. Mm. Like, he, he quite easily just sort of ducks to the side of that one, but is definitely looking you in a in a new light. Um, Lid, you're up. Right, that's quite a long distance for me to travel. Um, I guess it's probably worth saying that I definitely think about just legging it. Mm -hmm. But these guys have stepped up to the plate uh, and I feel a bit bad about leaving them. Mm -hmm. uh, so I guess it's just a case of travelling my six, uh, which might be... One, two, so that's fifteen, ten. Because I just want to be sideways. Yeah, so, so um, that I can that's two diagonals. So that's a five and a ten. Total of fifteen. Uh, sorry, these are each five, right? These yeah. yeah. Right. So. But yeah, but if you move 20. two diagonally. So that's fifteen. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. 20, 25, 30. And then that's a bit too far for me to throw my daggers. What you could do is yeah. you can use your turn to move double. So you can trade yeah. your. So a move is made up by a standard action, uh -huh. move action and a swift action. Right, okay. So what you can do is you can trade those down. So you could trade your standard action for two move actions. It's called like a double move. Cool. Or you can trade it for something called a run action, mm -hmm. which is you basically pegging it, mm -hmm. but that is much faster, but at the expense of you can't do anything else. You're running in pretty much straight lines and okay. blah, blah, blah. Well, then uh, I think I will run up to here behind this box. Mm -hmm. I may even crouch behind said box. It would grant you bonuses um, for cover, basically. Mm -hmm. So if any of them are having any ranged attacks or anything, that will come into play. Mm. Okay, cool. At which point, let's briefly cut from combat to Hamid. You're following the crowd and you see basically an enormous crowd off into the distance. And off to the right, what looks like a kind of sideshow crowd. Um, a couple of them are yelling. Um, there seems to be some like drunken men sort of clamouring to get through to the to the front of that crowd and to put it bluntly passage you little dude you are appearing about here and in between you and them are let's say a bunch of <laughs> I don't really, because of the, the, the miniatures we're using an enormous horde of horrifying <laughs> abominations and there's say a crowd of people they're like that. They're party tyrannids. They're all painted in neon colours. Make sure they're colours that are not the red colours. Oh, yeah, sorry. sorry. There we go. And a tank. Why not? There's also a tank. <laughs> I'm going to remove him for the simple reason that he's literally taking up six squares. Uh, for anyone who's listening, it's an enormous metal sort of tyrannid... It can't can't effect. Effect. Can't if Oh, I'm so yeah. sorry. I can't believe I remember that. <laughs> so... Um, Basically, you're in initiative order, Bryn, but obviously there's going to be a bit more RPing to yours to take into the situation. So, yeah, you've literally come around and you're seeing that, and you can see a guy KO'd, and you basically see him whiff, like, swing and a miss for the... Oh my god, it's Bertie! <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to push my way through the crowd to the front, uh -huh. but 
I, uh, not really getting that's much. fine <laughs> <laughs> give me a perception check James uh, nine plus <laughs> minus one, minus one <laughs> eight minus the fact that he's yeah, there's no, a half you have no yeah. idea basically he's going oh my god it's Bertie and you're there going oh, bro, bro, chaffing, <laughs> cutting the wheat with my sword um, he's okay. distracted to be fair got a lot on <laughs> okay so Figgis right uh, isn't it my guy because Figgis already moved Figgis did already move. Mm. he moved into the shadows he did so it is. It is yours. I apologise. <laughs> Mine is quite sick. This 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 man here. He's bleeding, right? Yep. Oh, good. <laughs> Stabilise. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh, describe it to me. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> that was my move. <laughs> that, to, to clarify, in this game, he can move two squares. Yeah. Because of my peg leg. Two um, yes. Uh, does he want to and to roll a will wolf. save? Um. Against the stabilise. I'm going to go ahead and say no. Okay, cool. Well, I've got to give him the option. <laughs> <laughs> okay, describe what uh, stabilising, what you'll do mechanically and what it looks like. Fluffy. Uh, yes, so I... Um, okay, so stabilise. Um, effectively, when a character has been downed in a lethal way, mm-hmm. uh, they start bleeding out. Um, so they start losing a hit points a turn. Mm-hmm. A bit more blue this myself. Until they get to minus 10. Once they get to minus 10, they're dead, dead. Pretty much. They have to be resurrected by magical fantasy means. Yes. Uh, stabilise effectively says stop it. Yeah. Um, it just stops their bleed count, means they won't bleed out. They're still unconscious, they're just not going to die. Mm-hmm. Uh, which is good. Um, for me, uh, that means um, getting a uh, kind of bending down, getting a little kind of water skin of salt mm-hmm. water out of my pocket, pouring it over the wound and muttering some prayers to Poseidon. him. Okay, cool. Um, it becomes readily apparent that the guy has stabilised. Um, the What sort of the small knife runes appear to... Um, knit enough um, by which I mean the, the bleeding stops there's some clotting going on by no means have you healed this person yeah. but they're, they're no longer like bleeding out all over the all over the uh, floor he's not fine he's just not completely screwed yeah good way of putting it okay um, apologies yes now now it's Figgis so with that in mind let me do a quick roll you hear a clang and give me a perception roll, uh, Lydia. Me? Yeah. Okay. Uh, nine. I don't to, oh, oh, sorry. Nine plus uh, six. Fifteen. Fifteen? I can do maths. Figgis <laughs> appears to be wailing on the lock of the door. Um, wailing as in hitting. As in hitting. Sorry, okay. yes, that's a totally uh, 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 an ism from where I'm, I, I grew up. I right. find this... Uh, offensive both from a moral standpoint and a professional one yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah he's, he's, he's clearly like hitting the lock who knows maybe he's trying to get out and flank round mm. um, okay after that the guy who's immediately facing Bertie tries his luck unwisely but he'll try his luck uh, what's your AC? 20. <laughs> <laughs> not not going to bother saying what he rolled. Um, because, actually, what would he have to roll out of curiosity? I'm not going to say it out in case I... Uh... Yeah, it's okay. I'm not going to say. Uh, let's just say that there, there needs to be... There needs to be another figure in there at the very least. <laughs> um, Do you mind? <laughs> so he basically... Uh, yeah, he... he he draws um, what looks like a, um, a a short sword, actually. Like he's they're, they're, he's wearing a fairly larger coat, and it's it's kind of a bit higher up, so he could get away with hiding it. He draws it, and then just you know winds back and does a real like big slice right onto the side of the breastplate, and it, it doesn't screech or anything. It just wong, <laughs> just stops it dead. Like it, there's no sort of he didn't like swing and a miss. He just connected and nothing, like nothing at all. He didn't even register it. This guy. Mm. takes a five foot step so a five foot step is where instead of doing a big move you just move one square but in doing so you can avoid those attacks of opportunities we were talking about Mm -hmm. so um, another way you can avoid them by the way which is useful for you Lydia is acrobatics Um, just being me avoids most I was going to say that seems to be doing the job so this guy also will try his luck but there's no way he's risking an attack of opportunity (laughs) 
20, was it? Mm. Yeah. That's a hit. Is he flanking? No. Um, he would have to be immediately opposite on the far oh, side. Oh, right. Yeah, flanking's a bit of a weird one where it requires you to be like directly oh, opposite. Opposed. If you were if you're side to side, it doesn't really if count. If you're there and there, that's flanking. Right? Yeah, it's it's if the way to describe it is if you imagine a like a hundred and eighty degree line, um yeah, long long story short. I get it. It's it's to do with they have to be on what you'd appreciate mm-hmm. to be opposite sides. The other rules that will be fun eventually is when we do range stuff and it's like how it covers corners of squares and stuff. It's a bit weird. Yeah. Um, so he'll roll his attack, which is a formidable 1d6. Plus a little bit more. He deals you four damage. You deduct that from your total hit points and write that on your sheet. So I'm now down to nine. Uh-huh. See, that's the thing with level one is that everyone gets quite cocky because you can down people in a single mm-hmm. blow, but you also forget that if you get blow. hit twice, you're probably going to go down okay. yourself. It's it's a level one's a slightly weird one. It kind of stabilizes in the lower levels. Um, okay, so that is the two cut purses, and Bertie, yeah, Bertie, you're up. Okay, uh, I'm going to swing my sword at the one who just wounded me. Uh huh. Um, I'm struggling to hit them, aren't I? I did last um, time. You didn't roll particularly high. Okay. I think I'm just going for a normal attack. Yep. The way. 18. 18. And um, what's the threat range on a bastard? Is it 19, 19 and 20? 20. Okay, cool. So you, you, can, you get a hit. So roll your damage, which will be the damage on a bastard being 110. Yeah. 1d10. 10. Plus your strength. Which is... So I've got a 16, so I've got an ability modifier of 3. That's correct. So you Just are... D10 plus, D10 3. plus 3. Yeah. Lovely. Okay. And, and that 3 is a guaranteed. 4 plus 3 is 7. 7. Okay. Okay. And that's your turn then. Um, how, how is he looking? Um, bad. Not good. Right. Quite bad. As in, like, in half bad? Or... He's still kicking. He's not okay. knocked out or anything. Um, we'll say that because it's a, a long sword, it's... Um... Yeah, basically, it, it tears through a shirt, revealing what looks like a leather curious underneath. And effectively, it tears through that as well, exposing sort of the skin beneath, and maybe gives him a, a light cut. But it doesn't actually, like, you know sever huge chunks of his body flesh wound. he's not just he's not part of the person yeah exactly okay, cool. right okay so then on to lydia one thing i kind of want to clarify mm-hmm. is in past by like these are people mm-hmm. people that i vaguely know mm-hmm. if i don't want to kill them mm-hmm. but i don't want them to keep fighting what are my options uh, you have the option of dealing non-lethal damage with a lethal weapon, which gives you a penalty of... Do you know this off the top of your hand, Brian? I don't. I, you have to take an attack penalty to do it. But It's around the minus one, minus two mark, right. where basically what people tend to do in that kind of situation is use lethal to bring them down mm-hmm. faster, and then when they're kind of... When you think mm-hmm. they're kind of approaching the knockout, you swap to non-lethal. Right. Um, other people will also just stock a non-lethal item. So for yourself, I'd recommend at some point picking up a sap, um, a sap is, think of it as basically a sock full of sand, as Terry Pratchett would put it. Right. Um, it's, it's like a kosh. Okay. You just use it to... Whoop. So what you'll do is, whilst fighting, a lot of people will take quick draw. You don't need it because you've got the, the wrist, but it allows you mm-hmm. to change weapons quickly. So they'll bring them down and then they'll just finish them off with a, a kosh to the head to knock them out. Yeah. Um, but I don't really have those things, so I don't have that much of an option. So I need to just try for non-lethal. Ultimately, the most damage that you could do is not going to be enough to kill him outright. Right. He would need to make saves against bleeding out, mm-hmm. and presumably in that time, um, Mr. Cleric over if here... If I can get over there. <laughs> <laughs> if, if Bertie was to go over, pick him up, carry him back. Yeah. Okay. Um, in which case... And she's not a cleric. Say again? Oh, yeah, she doesn't true. know I can stabilise right now. Oh, true. true. Anyone can attempt to stabilise. Oh, that, that's, that's true as well. Yes. That's true yes. as well. It's just I do, I've got two in heal. Oh, yeah, you, you can stabilise them. Uh, can I? Uh-huh. You, yeah. can make, you can roll Sta- for it. Stabilise is basically absolute critical first aid. Right, okay. Right, so in that case, so it, may, it sounds like it, it trying for non-lethal isn't worth it in this case. It depends. Um, I think she would try for non-lethal. She doesn't, she doesn't like killing people. That's At fine. least not yet. That's fine. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, so a transformation to adventure is incomplete. These are, these are people that 
but she knows. In fairness, murdering a bunch of people with a crowd watching is yeah, always problematic. Yeah, exactly. It's like there's an audience. There's an audience that's talking to us at this end. So uh, yeah, can I hop over that box with my acrobatics and get um, to be directly behind him? You could. What I'll do is I'll say that mechanically mm -hmm. you would have just moved around it without any penalties. Okay. Which would be the 5, 15, 20, 25. Cool. Um, so we'll say that mechanically you did so. Mm -hmm. However, what I would point out mm -hmm. is that if you go here, you are leaving a threatened square because if you he currently threatens all squares around him. Remember that you okay. are like so I get... you have universal vision as it were. So if you were to stop there. Uh -huh. But then um, am I behind him? Am I flanking him? Yes. Yeah, you're still okay, flanking. Okay, cool. I'll be, I'll be in that flanking square and I will try for a non-lethal stab. Should we assume that the flanking bonus cancels the non-lethal penalty? Yeah, they do. I, I'm, I'm being incredibly lazy here and could look it up, but frankly, um, it's, it's not worth the time right now. Right. <laughs> Shouldn't so, admit that to a listening audience. So that means that I just roll the 1d4? You still have to roll the attack. Okay, sorry, yeah. It's okay. I'm new at this. Ten. So, what's your attack bonus with the dagger? One. Uh, does not hit. Ah, oh, phew, well that solves my dilemma. <laughs> <laughs> welcome, welcome to basically That's, all tabletop RPGs. Dagger, though. You do. Go for the roll. Two. Man, if only all moral dilemmas could be solved by ineptitude. <laughs> my, my hesitancy is really... It's really undermining my ability here. Uh -huh. um, and on to Hamid. Currently, the last thing that happened was... Oh my god, it's Bertie! I watch and wait. That's fine. Thanks. Um, <laughs> I don't know what's going on. All right. Ben, you're up. Uh, cool. Um, drag this guy, kind of lean him up against the wall. Uh, I'll let you do that flavour suddenly, otherwise that's going to cost you so much move. <laughs> oh no, that was my turn. Oh, sure. That's yeah, what we want to do. Well, yeah. Thanks. <laughs> In fairness, it's going to take you about ten rounds to yeah. make it down the alley. Uh, no, can, I can, can I run. run. I can run. Yeah. <laughs> In fact, how long would him pegging it? How far would he get? I pegging oh, it, eh? Poor choice of words. Oh! <laughs> if you were to do the run action, you could get involved by the, your next round, if yeah. you choose. I know. Okay, cool. So you spend your turn um, propping that guy this up This is just an unconscious bleeding dude. Uh, it's not bleeding. He's <laughs> covered in blood. Right. Yeah, the, he is covered in blood. <laughs> okay, on to our good friend Figgis. Ooh, it's a fine hit. Um, you, I'll, you can't get an angle on him from where you are. You just hear another clang. Mm. And then, uh, as far as you're aware, Figgis is still in that alleyway. Let's just, uh, yeah, let's let, let's just presume he's still definitely waiting for an opportune moment to attack. Do we need to roll a perception or anything to detect his absence, or not really? He okay. was he was out Actually, of you, he was out of sight for right. you for ages. Okay. No. Um, in which case, this guy will go for you first. Mm -hmm. uh, won't hit, and another one. Won't hit. Um, so that was ping and yeah, ping. That, that was both. Uh, honestly, for, the, for for rolls that low, which were a nine and a four, by the way, for people asking, thinking, um, yeah, they just they didn't even make contact at that point. It was pretty much a case of them them making an over exaggerated lunge for you, and it's the equivalent of a ha ha. Like I, you can flavour it however you want, but they they didn't even contact that time. Um, Lydia, you're up. Uh, I will try my non-lethal stabs. Mm -hmm. See if my hesitancy has. Oh, That's 18. A hit. 18. And don't forget uh, your second attack. Yep. Yeah, well, I've got to see how much uh, damage I do. Truly. It's much of a muchness. Triangle ones. Uh, one. Mm -hmm. uh, Minus your strength. Thanks. So that's cancelled it out. So now roll for d six. You automatically are taking minus one because you've got um, eight in your strength. That's the trade-off. Okay, I thought I'd switch it. To Dex you you, you have, but that, that, that's, that's to hit, not for damage. Yeah, yeah. Right, right, okay. yeah, yeah. So you'll always deal minus one on the damage, Ooh. but you're... Okay, well, my other one misses. I managed to get a two. Well, no, you, no, you also have a sneak attack. You get your sneak attack oh, on, right. on the first one, which hit, because you're flanking. Four. Four. You also get a plus one to damage because you're flanking. Yes, I do. Oh, so you're back fighting. up to five. Yeah, good point. Right. Oh, two weapon fighting. Don't you love it? That, yeah, that, yeah. So that was, all my, that was all my first weapon. And then my yeah. second one, I got a two, yeah, which I don't think is a critical. I don't stab myself on a roll. A two, <laughs> you don't hit. No. Um, 
What you can is, depending, there are fumble rules in Pathfinder, I tend to dodge them in combat and not really bother, um, but it's stuff like if you roll a natural one, you're meant to roll on like a, another table to see whether you drop your weapon or whether like, your weapon explodes in your face. And <laughs> Depending how far you want to go, there are brilliant ones for spell failure. <laughs> One of which yeah, include good. things like the nearest person to you dies, uh, your arm falls off, like they're quite elaborate. You turn purple. Yeah, yeah. Uh, someone I know looked like but was not a bugbear for an entire campaign as a result of one of them. Nice. A bugbear is not a very nice creature. We had someone who uh, couldn't stop detecting magic. <laughs> he just had to take magic on his eyes consistently, so he had to have special goggles made so that he wasn't blinded by this oh, highly magical guy. campaign. Poor guy. <laughs> Um, okay, uh, Hamid, you're up. You've seen now a bunch of people try to wail on Bertie. Not successfully, but they've been trying to uh, trying to hit him. Yeah, I don't know the situation. That's fine. I'm not going to get involved. I don't like your character. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We haven't seen each other in like a year. Um, I have no idea what's going if on. If I hadn't seen you for a year, Bryn, and I saw two people wheeling on at the end of the alley, I wouldn't just stand back and go, wow, they might have a point. <laughs> what if Bryn was in huge great armour going, no, no, and swords were bouncing off? Uh, well, even then, even, I would... Love Keeping it triumph. moving? Yes. <laughs> I'm a lover, not a fighter. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, Sure. Uh, right. Well, I do have something with range, which is nice. Uh, which, one, two, three, four, five, six. I still need to be there. <laughs> still far, too far away. Uh, so the run action, right? How, yep. how does that work? How much faster do I go? You go four times your base speed. Okay. <laughs> which one, is formidable. Two, three, four, five, six. I've hit a box. I'll stop at the box. <laughs> so you could take a diagonal. No, you can't. You have to go in a straight line. Oh, it's yeah, it's a run action. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I've hit a box. Are there any uh, puddles you command the loyalty armor? Yeah. So that was a formidable dash down the alley. I was like, whoa! <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, Figgis does whatever Figgis is doing out of sight. Um, the cutthroats. Okay. Again? We, we've, we've gone, we've gone back around. Oh, all right. I think it's just they're waiting when you continue, so you're like, ah, yeah. oh, not this again. <laughs> and the reason they are is because you're dropping them left, right, and centre. Um, so that's a roll of... No. And the other one? No. Um, the first one misses, the second one makes contact, but just can't get through the armour. If it looks like you're in trouble, I'll help. <laughs> <laughs> Bertie, you're up. Okay, um, right, I think I... I reckon this one is pretty well flanked by uh, Sasha. Mm -hmm. So, oh, I don't know your name yet, do I? We haven't no. been formally introduced. Not yet. No, not no. formally. Um, <laughs> you think of me as Stabby Small Woman. <laughs> Stabby woman, but quiet. I at this point. <laughs> I, hey, um, we, we established she's, she's, not, she's not a girl or, or young woman. or distinct. She is you, woman. I think you called her a little girl. <laughs> Well, she's woman. Yeah, thanks. I've been strongly, been strongly corrected at the beginning of the campaign. It's woman. Right. Um, I, in the name of Ultra... Um, does, uh, is this crowd starting to pay attention now? Uh, the crowd's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Okay, cool. And they're like, oh, there's a fight. Are they cheering? The drunken guys are currently populating the side nearest the big crowd. And it seems like they're all yelling encouragement for stabby woman. Okay. Right. I'm, I'm not pleased that you're drawing focus. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm going to go for a power attack on that guy, and yep. I'm going to I'm going to attempt to neatly bisect him. I can't stabilise that. <laughs> I'm fine with that. Go for it. Go for the roll. Uh, Sixteen. Yeah, that's a hit. It's um, a fine hit. Yeah. So you roll your d10 plus three. Correct. With your extra plus one for power attack. Uh, eight. Yep. Plus three, uh, which is eleven. Plus one more is, makes a total of twelve. It's a bonus of two on damage for power attack. Oh, nice! 13, yeah, you're basically that that's why because oh, worth you it. minus one oh, plus three. Yeah. Thirteen. Thirteen. Squelch. I don't think he's probably not dead. Dead. No. Dead. Dead. But. So you basically wind up, you know, giving a little bit of luck to look to all of the people making sure they're looking, and just you know, almost baseball swing it round. It it <laughs> it connects. In a big way, it, you can't see through clothing in the curious, but it's clearly in the person. It's gone uh, in like an inch, like two inches. <laughs> um, I'm not going to go into that in much detail. I'm just going to say that it went in. It's gone in an inch. Uh, and then basically, he's he's very, very down. Okay. Very, very down. There's quite a lot of blood. 
Um, a lot, a couple of people in the crowd scream. A lot of the people in the crowd cheer, <laughs> and um, you see there are sort of guards trying to sort of fight their way through. Oh, what's um, our line? Don't worry, we're crowd control. <laughs> <laughs> It's cool, guys. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, Lydia. Uh, I'm gonna freaking attempt my non-lethal stab again. Go for it. Oh, that didn't... Eight. Uh, um, ooh. Nope. Well, second one. Second one. One. Oh, no. Do I hurt myself? <sighs> no. You no, know what? Maybe. What I'll do is I'll get to roll a d20 and then I'll use that to decide fluff. Oh, okay. Nah, you're fine. Okay. Nothing fluffable happens. I just cock up. I mean, it's a one in. It's a one in four hundred chance of uh, two natural ones in a row. So I think that would be worth of a fumble, I'm afraid. But no. Stab yourself in the eye. (laughs) (laughs) Rubbish. Okay, so, um, Hamid. Um, you, you just watch your old friend just, just basically massacre someone. I mean, the guy's not dead. Clearly, he's going. I cast Prestidigitation. <laughs> I turn to the crowd and shout loudly, Come to Bertie and Bots for all your blood-based jokes! And cause fake blood to spray from my arms onto the floor. <laughs> I am bluffing the crowd yeah, that this a, is a promotional. Give me, give me, give thing. me a bluff chair. That's some good, like it's in media <laughs> res advertising. <laughs> it's, it's it's improv everywhere. Yeah, yeah. that is an awful. D twenty. What was that? It, exactly. Is that a one? It's a no, seven. It's a seven. seven. Okay. It's just a. But my bluff is seven. I think. It's not great. Taking it to 14. Yeah. Uh, there's a couple of people going, oh, oh yes, oh, that's brilliant. There's a few people who aren't, like, completely moronic who are going, what? Why would you... What? <laughs> this is not a very convincing advertising campaign at all. <laughs> at best, this is tasteless. <laughs> and at worst, this is this is actually murder. I just don't feel I'm engaging with the brand. <laughs> you're, what, you're, what you're benefiting from is the crowd mentality of someone should do something. <laughs> oh, yes, yes, I agree, definitely. So, uh, don't worry, I'll, I'll have another go next. <laughs> right? yeah. um, and Ben, you're up. Hello. Uh, cool. Can you? You've just, yeah, you've just seen someone get annihilated, and this guy and then is KO'd. But Don't he's kill him, you idiot! He's washed out. Um, and then I move very slowly. Uh, you could move your ten and stabilize the one nearest to you. No, that's fine. Uh, ooh. <laughs> Thanks for that. This is going to be the longest episode in the world. Um, and I uh, ray of frost him or whatever it is. Uh, oh, icicle. Cool. I fire an icicle at him. Uh huh. Um, so it's a ranged touch attack. Okay. So give me the attack roll. What is the ranged touch attack roll? Um, it'll be a d20. It's your uh, base plus dex. Base oh. attack plus dex. Mm-hmm. So you're on zero, but you're against a touch AC, which is normally yeah. really low. So. Uh, because touch AC, the idea is that it's just to make contact with the person. So wearing huge amounts of armor doesn't actually. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Uh, Sixteen. Uh, that's a hit. Cool. Uh, dealing myself. I thought be... uh, two cold damage. Oh, plus half cleric level. I'm assuming that's a. Round it down to zero. Uh, that's or... m- that's normally in a minimum of one. Oh, okay. So three damage, three cold damage. The last one drops. As to apparently all of the crowd who I knocked over. Um, yes, the last guy drops. Congratulations! You all just completed a combat. Hey, hey. we did a combat. Which is a really great place to awesome. end. Brief oh, addendum, just in case. I will stabilise all three of them with my next all action. Right. Can, I, can I make my my l- final bluff check just try right, and you persuade make your the crowd we'll close on your final I'm bluff a, check I'm going to roll it first and then describe what it. happens I did not roll well okay uh, 12 12 I'd probably go on about fake blood some more while waving my arms in effect. <laughs> spraying <laughs> spraying <people. laughs> fake blood everywhere. I think at this point Bertie steps over them and attempts to bluff himself because it was Bertie. I'm going to close on the. Uh, okay. I'm going to close on the the impotent blood spray. 
um, <laughs> because we, we're out of time and we've run over massively. So uh, I totally made a contribution. <laughs> <laughs> I begin winching my daggers back into my spring-loaded sheath. Okay, uh, I think we're going to close on that. So with that in mind, um, thanks everyone for listening and we hope you had a good time with Figgis. Mm-hmm. Stompy McClumperson <laughs> and uh, basically and the rest Thompson. of the team yeah. and, Th- and Thompson, yeah. So thanks for listening. Bye. 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 Rusty Quill Gaming is a podcast distributed by RustyQuill.com and licensed under a Creative Commons Attribution Non Commercial International license. Today's episode was recorded and produced by Alexander J. Newell. To comment on episodes, make donations, and view links, images, videos, and show notes, visit rustyquill.com. Rate and review us on iTunes. Visit us on Facebook. Tweet us on Twitter at the Rusty Quill, or email us at mail at rustyquill.com. Thanks for listening. break ad break it's definitely an ad break for like our own shows <laughs> washing machines live longer with cal gone <laughs> no. no but we can always fill it with uh, comedy adverts as well if we want to oh yeah that's the thing is basically i'm leaving this slot free Watch because like a sword oh my god a sword <laughs> I, I listen. I listen to the door. The door says nothing, <laughs> but it appreciates the attention. <laughs> and there is, uh, there's obviously there's ball dancing around. There's an ice cream truck. There as is well. an ice cream truck. <laughs> there is ice cream in the casino. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> this is one of the problems of podcasting. Is occasionally there's ice cream. Can we get an ice cream? Can we go get, ice cream? Can we have a, can we have a, you can have an ice cream if you do your podcasting properly. <laughs>